There's no such thing as a perfect pitching stat, but some get us a lot closer to the true value of a pitcher's abilities than others. FIP is one of those stats. Simple, powerful, and focused on what a pitcher can actually control. But like any stat, it also needs context. That's where a stat like XFIP comes in. In today's video, we'll break down what FIP really tells you, why XFIP matters just as much, and how using them together can help you spot breakout arms or regression candidates. Let's jump into it. Let's begin with a quick refresher on what FIP is. FIP stands for Fielding Independent Pitching, and it tells us how well a pitcher performs based on things only they can control. Strikeouts, walks, hit by pitches, and home runs. The logic? Take fielders and defense completely out of the equation. FIP ignores bloop singles, diving catches, and bad hops, and it just focuses on the outcomes that a pitcher directly controls. Here's the formula. That last part, the constant, adjusts the output of FIP to scale so that league average FIP aligns with league average ERA to make it even easier for people who are new to FIP to understand. Now, this video is going to be more focused around XFIP and how you can use these two stats in conjunction to better analyze pitchers. But if you'd like a full deep dive on FIP, check out our video on that stat link below. Next, let's dive into what XFIP entails. XFIP stands for Expected Fielding Independent Pitching. It's the same formula as FIP, but with one major tweak. It replaces a pitcher's actual home run total with an expected number, based on how many fly balls they give up in the league average home run to fly ball rate. So instead of saying, this guy gave up 21 home runs, XFIP says he gave up 230 fly balls with a league average home run to fly ball ratio of 10% that should have been 23 homers. The idea being that a pitcher cannot control the park in which they are pitching in. The cool thing about baseball is every single big league park has unique dimensions. Some are more pitcher friendly and some are more hitter friendly. If you pitch for the Rockies and have to play half of your games in one of the most hitter friendly ballparks, the idea behind XFIP is that you shouldn't be penalized for that when trying to determine your true value. By the way, if you enjoy content like this and want to see more, check out the shop to show your support for the brand. We've got two new hat styles to show off that you're proud to be a part of the baseball analytics movement. Links at the top of the description to get yours today. Anyways, why do we need XFIP? Let me make this clear. Home runs are not all luck. But when trying to evaluate how good a pitcher may be in the future, you need to take into account how his stuff will play in a more neutral environment. Weather, ballpark dimensions, altitude, and the most frequent direction of the wind all impact whether a fly ball leaves the ballpark. You've probably seen several posts online about a home run that would have been a home run in only six ballparks. That is the idea behind XFIP. Let's take some of that randomness out of the equation. XFIP smooths all of that out. It's especially useful for projecting forward because when front offices are evaluating players, they don't care about the number of home runs they have given up. They care about how many they will give up in the future. So when you go to apply FIP versus XFIP, what are the real differences? FIP shows you how a pitcher actually performed based on outcomes that they can control. XFIP shows you what should have happened if luck and randomness were removed from specifically home run outcomes. FIP is more literal, XFIP is slightly more predictive. If a pitcher's FIP is high, but their XFIP is low, that usually means they've been unlucky with homers. Maybe they've given up a few home runs to the short porch in Yankee Stadium, or have just dealt with some more days with the wind blowing out. If it's the opposite, low FIP with a high XFIP, it could be a warning that regression may be coming because he's pitching in a more pitcher-friendly ballpark. All of this stuff adds up when making multi-million dollar decisions on who to sign or trade for. Let's go through a quick generic example. Say you're looking at a pitcher with a 4.8 ERA, a 4.2 FIP, and a 3.4 XFIP. That tells you a few things. His actual results haven't been great. That's looking at ERA. His strikeouts, walks, and home runs have been better than you'd expect for those overall results. That's talking about FIP. And he's likely given up more home runs than you would have expected, meaning better results may be coming in the future. And that's XFIP. Front offices look for this exact kind of profile, undervalued arms who are performing better than the box score suggests. However, XFIP isn't perfect. Some pitchers genuinely suppress home runs with elite pitch shapes, deception, or command. Others give up loud contact by nature. 
and XFIP doesn't penalize them enough. So, while XFIP is great for projections, it can underrate pitchers who are truly elite at limiting hard contact. That's why we have to pair it with other stats. What would I recommend that you look at next? Here are some advanced stats to layer in once you've already looked at FIP and XFIP. First, barrel percentage and hard hit percentage. Are hitters squaring them up? Home run to fly ball percentage. Is their home run rate really sustainable? And ground ball percentage. Are they avoiding fly balls in the first place? These will help you dive deeper into the actual performance of each individual pitcher. And if you'd like to learn more on what stats I'd recommend you dive into, check out our top five pitching stats video linked here. At the end of the day, think of ERA, FIP, and XFIP as three parts of a triangle. ERA tells you what happened, although heavily influenced by the defense behind the pitcher. FIP tells you how they've pitched by only looking at what a pitcher can control. And XFIP tells you what should have happened by neutralizing the environment in which we evaluate them. If all three line up, great. You're looking at a solid snapshot of who that pitcher is. But if they don't, you found something interesting and maybe even a market inefficiency that you can look to take advantage of in the future. So next time you see a pitcher with an inflated ERA, don't stop there. Check his FIP. Then check the XFIP, and you tell me how good you believe that pitcher is. And if you love these kinds of stat breakdowns, I've got deep dives on XERA, Stuff Plus, and Sierra already live on the channel. Check those out, and while you're here, grab one of those limited Simple Saber Metrics hats to show off that you're a part of the data-driven baseball revolution. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you right back here next week on Simple Saber Metrics.